What's up everybody, this is Andres with The Graphic Shack here in beautiful Ramona, California. And today we're gonna do a video that we've been getting a lot and it's gonna be how to break down or how to run a screen printing shop so that you're profitable. How long have you been screen printing? I've been screen printing for a long time. Unofficially, I started in 2009. We're in 2023 now. How long have you been at this location? This particular location where we're at, I came here in 2019. Kind of like my backstory or trajectory. Did you always have a shop? I started in my parents' garage. Once I became really good at what I was doing and I felt comfortable enough, I opened up a storefront, a big space. Uh, the rent was high. And then from there, I downsized to where we're at now. And this is just, I think, 400 square feet. So it's very small. You know, whatever space you got, you can make work for you. What's the first expense? So we've been getting a lot of requests for this video. We did one before and we'll link it in the description. But people want more details on, on how exactly I go about getting my prices. So if you ask 100 screen printers how they price their shirts, you're going to get a whole bunch of different answers. Everybody prices different. There's no right way. There's no wrong way. It's just the way that works best for you. That's really at the end of the day what it comes down to. If it makes sense for you, and it works for you, then keep going with it. Don't worry what you know the, the neighbor is charging. Don't worry what this big guy over here is charging. Just do what is working for you. But that being said, we're gonna answer you guys' question. Let's get into it. So there's gonna be three main factors that will go into the price of your shirt. We're gonna have fixed cost, variable cost, and then we'll have actual labor. This is just a system that I developed for my shop for my setup and this is what works for me okay so also that being said keep in mind that i am in san diego county california so if you're in the east coast in the united states maybe you're in another country pricing may also be dictated by your uh, location so in california things are very expensive so my pricing here might sound crazy in your area but keep in mind that here these pricing and these costs that I'm going to talk about, everything is relative to California. So the first column we're going to go with is the fixed cost. So fixed cost is anything that is every month the same, month in, month out, year in, year out. Those costs don't change. They might go up a little bit, like insurance might go up a little bit, uh, an expense that you incur every single month. We're going to start off with rent. So. We're gonna base this off of a 1,000 square foot storefront. Now you can apply this, you can apply the same formula if you're doing it from your house, if you're doing it from your bedroom, your garage. If you don't have rent and you're doing it from your house, you should be renting that room, you should be renting that garage out to yourself, even if you pay rent to your parents, even if you're paying rent to a landlord. The tax code allows for you to charge yourself or to charge or recuperate anything that you would incur as a business. So look into that in your specific area and you should be charging yourself uh, some type of rent, even though you may be working from home. So let's get into it, okay? So we're gonna go for rent, monthly rent. We're gonna go with $1,200. Okay, this is for roughly a 1,000 square foot place. If you have a smaller place or if you're working from your house, let's just say if you're working from your house, in California, you can comfortably charge yourself, let's go with $500, okay? Just so you guys have an idea, but don't take my word for it. Make sure you do your own due diligence because I'm not a financial advisor. For insurance, we're gonna go with about $150. For electricity, electricity is a big one. So electricity is more expensive in certain hours than it is in the night hours or in the summer than in the winter. These numbers will apply to my old shop, the first shop that I opened because that's kind of what we were paying at the time. So at the time we were paying about, I'm gonna say 165 for the electricity. The water was pretty cheap. We were at about $85 a month. Internet, for internet, we were paying 65. The cell phone, that's another probably 65. And, and, and of course, it's gonna depend if you got a family plan. So th these are relative to me, of course. So make sure that when you run these numbers, they are your numbers. Don't use my numbers because then you're gonna be either overcharging or undercharging. If you have a website, what does your website cost? Uh, for us at the time, let's go with 45. And any subscriptions that you might have 
For example, let's say uh, if you subscribe to the QuickBooks app, I have a Google, um, the memory cloud Google. thing, the Google store. I think that's, I pay $1.99 and I pay also subscription for Adobe, the Illustrator, Photoshop, their whole cloud system. And that's $30, uh, $40 a month. So we're at 45, let's go with 50 just to keep round numbers. Okay, these are all the constant day in, day out, month in, month out expenses that my business incurs. Now, if you have other expenses that you are incurring month in, month out, then go ahead and, and put those bad boys in. So now that you have all your fixed costs, you go ahead and add them up. So total, 18, 25, so 1,825. This is just to turn the lights on every month. This is what it costs. So the, another thing, doing this, is gonna really open your eyes to what it really costs to have your business. So as you can see, we haven't even got any orders yet and we're already $1,825 in the hole for the month. Bro, you scaring people on the end. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know what they say, it, it takes money to make money. Yeah. Scared money, don't make money. Get in there, baby. That's right. What's the next section? Okay, next section is the variable cost. So variable is anything that will fluctuate or go up or down depending on how many shirts you're making. Okay? The idea here is to account for as much as you can. The more that you can put in there, the more accurate your pricing is going to be. So these are some of the things or most of the things that I uh, go through in my, in my shop your shop may be different. So let's go through the list. We got emulsion. Most of the time, somebody goes to the store, they buy a bucket of emulsion, and they say, how many screens can I get out of that? And they try to calculate it out. We're not trying to be that specific. I don't care if I buy a bucket and I can only do three screens. I can do 10 screens. I'm concerned with how often am I buying this? How often am I incurring this particular expense? Okay? And you're gonna see why later on. So the whole idea is we're gonna formulate a, an hourly rate. And that hourly rate is going to accommodate for everything that's in your business, okay? So emulsion. Emulsion, I typically buy the gallon emulsion and it's about $65 and roughly I buy that once every three months, okay? You may be busier than me, you might be slower than me, maybe you buy the smaller buckets or maybe the bigger buckets. So whatever it is for you, put that down. So emulsion is $65. Just to keep math simple, we're gonna call it 60. If I divide 60 by three months, it comes to 20. So every month I can account for $20 of emulsion. All right, so the next item on the line, Plastisol ink. How often do you typically buy ink? It doesn't matter if it's white ink, black ink. How often are you going to the store or online and purchasing ink? For me, roughly I can accommodate or I can count on buying two quarts of, of ink every, every month and each one of those is 25 bucks roughly. So $25, I'm buying two every month roughly. That's $50, right? So it doesn't really matter how many shirts am I getting out of that. I mean, if you want, I mean, if you want to know, I can roughly get about 100 shirts per quart, depending on the size of the print, depending on how many, you know, how many prints you're doing and all that. That's why it's not really practical to say, well, how many shirts can I get or how many prints? It doesn't really matter. Ink is very cheap. So you're going to come down, it's going to come down to cents, but we still want to accommodate for that. So Plastisol Ink, I'm buying two quarts every month, roughly 25 each, $50. Same thing with all these items here. We want to know how often we're buying. So screen cleaning items. This is uh, emulsion remover and Plastisol ink remover. I buy the gallon buckets and those are about uh, $40 each roughly. And so when I go, I buy both of them together and that's $80. I get those maybe every three months. So $80, let's call it 90 to keep math simple. 90 divided by uh, three months is $30. Next item is the on-screen ink remover. So what is that? Let's say you're doing a job using the same screen, but you're doing two different colors. Maybe the first color you printed it on white, the next color you're printing red. So you gotta clean that off, right? You don't wanna take that screen. You already have it set, it's already registered. You don't wanna take it out, take it to the wash booth. It's, just, it's too much time. So they have this thing called on-screen ink remover, which is what I buy to wipe off the screen. 
get it set for the next color. I buy usually one spray bottle and that will last me, let's go with one month. Maybe I buy it every two months, but let's go with one month and the bottle is about $20. The next thing on the list is the palette adhesive. That's the glue that we're putting on the actual palette so that the shirts can stick onto the palette and they don't move. I buy the one gallon water-based adhesive and it's about $80, I think, $80. And I buy that maybe once a year. I don't buy that often. Painter's tape. So the tape that you use to paint, uh, tape around the screen so that you don't get any ink going in areas you don't want it. I typically buy that in the five roll packs from Lowe's, from any, any hardware store really. And those, those are about like 28, something like that for the five packs, 28 bucks. And I, I buy that at least, at least once a month. So let's go with 28. Transparencies, these are the transparencies that you're gonna use to make the film positives or negatives. I don't know what the terminology is. But what, what are you spending on those and how often are you buying those? I buy those in the 100 pack. They're about $25 and I buy maybe every two months, every three months. Let's go with three months, 25 divided by three. How much is that race? Eight? Yep. Let's go with eight. Eight dollars for transparencies. Uh, printer ink is another thing that I got here on the list. Printer ink is the ink that your printer is using to print onto the transparencies. And that, I usually buy it, it's 25 bucks, and I buy it maybe twice a year. And then the clear tape, that, that's the tape that you use to tape down the transparency onto the screen when you're gonna go burn it. I buy that in the three packs at the 99 cent store, and they're not really 99 cents, they're like 1.99. <laughs> so when I buy those, I go through those three packs, let's go with a, a month. Maybe I buy two of those a month. Mm -hmm. So we'll go with four dollars. Four dollars. The next thing I have here is palette tape. This is the tape that I'm putting on the palettes to keep one to keep my palettes clean, and then two to make sure that I have a smooth printing surface every time for every um, order. I usually buy that. In, in, I think it's a hundred yard roll, and it's seventy five dollars. I buy that every six months. How much are we talking about there? Six dollars and twenty-five cents. So six dollars for the palette tape. The test palons. These are the little fabric sheets that I use to print. Once I have everything set up, make sure everything is lined up and printing as we need it. Those cost twenty-five dollars for a one hundred pack. I usually buy those every six months. I buy one black and one white, so I'm spending fifty dollars every six months for those. That is eight dollars and thirty-three cents. So. Eight dollars there and then the last thing I have on here you're gonna say why but it's business cards so why are business cards on the list if they have nothing to do with the shirt process well they don't and they do I I don't know if you guys have seen me but when I put the glue onto the palettes I use my business cards this is a free 99 knowledge right here if you go onto a website to buy they make these things called the uh, glue cards to spread the glue and they're like thirty dollars for for a hundred of them something like that so I'm already buying business cards why am I not gonna use my business cards for that and they're really cheap I think I spend like forty dollars for a thousand so that's a lot cheaper than buying those little cards all right so once we add all this up total is one hundred eighty five dollars this will account for the money you spend on all the things that you the, all the consumables basically so as you can see, the costs are adding up. We got 1,825 a month just to keep the lights on, and we got 185 a month just to restock our supplies. Now we're gonna go on to the third factor, and that is the labor factor. So this is where people might overthink it. You wanna keep it simple and keep it realistic. I can easily say I wanna pay myself a million dollars, but is that realistic? Not for me. So labor, what goes into the labor cost? So labor will be anything that you would pay somebody to do. Imagine you're the investor, you're the CEO, you're the boss, you're in the office, behind the scenes, everybody out there is working. So how much would you pay that person to do that particular job? That's what we're talking about, that's the labor, okay? 
The very first one that I have on here is the owner. So that would be you. Maybe you're a partner with somebody else, your wife, your friend, your brother, whatever the case may be, you guys would be considered the owners, okay? How much do you wanna get paid? How much is your labor worth? Keep in mind, you're responsible for the success of this company. You're, the, you're responsible for marketing, for getting orders in, quoting, printing, if you're doing the printing. For you're responsible for everything that has to do with this particular uh, business. How much would you be willing to pay somebody to do that for you and do it well? Do it the way that you do it, okay? An easy way, if you don't know what to charge, to think about it is how much do you make right now if you have a part-time job if you have a full-time job how much are you making per hour right now at the very minimum that should be your starting wage let's say that you're making um, $17 so you should not pay yourself less than $17 an hour in your own business if you're not willing to get paid less than 17 somewhere else correct so for me as the owner of my shop I would be willing to pay a CEO a director somebody to do everything that I do the way that I do it as good as I do it I would be willing to pay them $35 an hour now this second line is staff number one if you don't have any staff then you don't have to put that in there but I encourage everybody even if you're just a one-man show a one-woman show to at least account for at least one more person at some point you want to I mean idealistically you want to grow your business to where you can hire somebody to do most of the printing for you so that you can do all the back-end stuff how much would you pay somebody to print or do the work that you don't want to do for me here at my shop in California minimum wage I believe is like 1550 1550 in California if I was to hire somebody I am not gonna pay them a minimum wage. I refuse to pay anybody minimum wage. So if you work for me, I value you spending time in my shop, getting my work done, putting a good quality product out. So I'm gonna pay you well. So for me, I would pay $20 an hour. And then the last line here is the shop profit. So you're gonna ask yourself, well, why is that there? You're already, the owner's already getting paid $35 an hour. So why is the shop profit on there? Very easy. If we account for everything here, everything here, you're breaking even. You're not making any money. You're, you're getting paid, quote unquote, $35 an hour, but your business isn't making any money. What happens when your insurance goes up? What happens when the cost of all of your supplies goes up? What happens when you need to buy new equipment, something breaks? And so all those things would come out of the shop's profit if you include it. So any business, any company, doesn't matter how big or how small, they all have a margin, a profit margin. You hear people talking about the profit margin. That's gonna be up to you in your market area how much you want to make after everything is done, after you're being paid, after your staff's paid, after everything, okay? For me here at the shop, I account for 25%. So we're gonna go with a 25% margin. And this is a percent not an actual fixed rate, uh, not an actual number like $20 an hour, $35 an hour. This is a 25% and you'll see what I mean when we go into the actual formula. All right, so now we've added up the fixed cost, we added up the variable cost, now we gotta add up the labor cost. So for labor, we have 35 for the owner per hour, 20 per hour for the staff. That gives us um, 55 an hour, right? We're gonna skip the, the profit margin for now. So we're at $55 per hour for labor. All right. So now what we're gonna do is take all three of these variables, we're gonna combine them and we're gonna come up with an hourly rate. We have all of our totals. So now the next thing to do is to figure out how much are you working? How much time are you spending in your business? How many days of the week? How many hours? What does that look like? So typically 20 days out of the month, right? Five days a week. So we're gonna say 20 days, 20 of actual work days. And then we have to break it down further from those 20 days that you work, what does one day of work look like? Typically eight hours, right? Eight hours, so eight hour work day. And then we're gonna break it down even a little bit further. So from those eight hours, if we were to just make our formula with eight hours a day, 20 days a week, I mean a month, assume that we're working a hundred percent capacity every single hour eight hours a day no rest no lunch no break no restroom no nothing that's impossible think like a boss think like a ceo 
if you have a staff member working for you, you have to legally give them a, a break. You have to give them a lunch. So we're gonna subtract from those eight hours, we're gonna subtract one hour for lunch. And we're also gonna subtract two 15 minute breaks. So that's an hour and a half. And then we're gonna subtract another 30 minutes because it's impossible to go from job to job to job to job. That's just not, it's not humanly possible. From those eight hours, we're gonna say we're actually only doing work six hours out of the day. And we're gonna go down even more. We're gonna go down to, from those six, idealistically, we're gonna go to five, just to be safe. If you're working eight, eight hours a day, five hours a day of actual work is very, very achievable. So we're gonna go with five. So five hours of actual work. Okay, that's our goal right there. Five hours of actual work per day. Okay, so now we're gonna add the fixed cost, 1,825 plus the variable cost, which is 185. How much is that? So far, $2,010. Okay, so $2,010. We're gonna divide that by 20 work days. $100.50. So 100 and 50 cents. So now we want to know how much is it per hour. So divide 100 by the five. 20. So it's 20, right? So that was going to break down to $20. So it's costing you all of these costs, the fixed cost and the variable cost put together. It's costing you $20 per hour. Okay. So now that we have that, we have our actual labor costs over here. So we're going to take our labor costs. We're going to add the $20 per hour to, to cover all these other expenses. And so we have 55 plus the 20 that uh, covers our expenses is going to yield uh, 75, right? Yep. So we're now we're at $75. This is $75 per hour. So this is your hourly rate. This rate covers everything involved with your business, including your wage, including your staff members wage. If we didn't charge a profit, that was, that's it. If something breaks, it comes out of your pocket. If something uh, goes up, rent, utilities, if that goes up, it comes out of your pocket. So now you're not making 35 an hour anymore. Now you're making 30, 20, whatever it is, you know, because you're putting it out of your pocket. Ideally, you want to have the shop, have the business pay for all those things. So that's why you have to incorporate a certain profit margin. And that's gonna be up to you how much you want to, to uh, incorporate. I mean, you wanna do 100%, you could do 100%, that's up to you. I'm gonna tell you that most businesses on average, they shoot for a 30% profit margin. And that's usually great. So we're at 25%. So we're gonna work out a quick sample order here, just so you guys can see how this would apply. We have our hourly rate. This is our shop's hourly rate right here, $75 per hour, okay? So how does that come into play? So let's quote something. This is a 24 shirt order. So 24 pieces. It's gonna be one color and it's gonna be one location. 24 shirts, one color, one location. And let's go with just a basic gilded shirt. Now, the other part of this is, which we didn't talk about here, but this, this is gonna really depend on you. This is gonna to be, this is gonna be your homework. You have to know how long it takes you to make things happen. How long does it take you to burn screens? How long does it take you to coat them and clean them? How long does, how many shirts can you produce per hour? How many, all of that. For example, don't say, I'm gonna start right now and then because you know that you're being timed, go as fast as you can. That's unrealistic. You cannot work eight hours at full capacity. It's just humanly impossible. You're gonna start strong and then you're gonna finish slow. So work normal, maybe over one month or two months, see how long it takes you. Say today I started at 1 p.m. Okay, I started a shirt order, I did 25 shirts, I finished at 4 p.m. Okay, jot it down. The next order you get, do the same thing. Maybe it's 12 shirts. I started at this time, and then at this time. So whenever you clean screens, I started at this time, I finished at this time. And do that over one or two, three months, whatever it is. That way you have a basis and that way you can see how long it actually takes you to clean the screens, to do everything that it takes to get this job done, okay? For me here at the shop, comfortably, and this is, you know, maybe restroom break, maybe we're snacking here and there, maybe I have a, a customer that comes in the door, I gotta stop what I'm doing, help the customer, a phone call, things happen. So for us, comfortably, we're, at, we're gonna be at 25 to 30 shirts per hour, okay? If it's something like this, if it's something simple, we could probably do it faster, but we're not, we're not here to, to, to do it as fast as we can. We're here to, to figure out how can we get these shirts out in a, in a comfortable and timely manner, of course. So for us, 25 shirts, 
one hour. So for me, I'm gonna charge one hour to print. We're gonna need one screen, 30 minutes per screen. And it doesn't take me 30 minutes per screen, but what I mean by that is coding it, setting it up, burning it, everything that goes into getting the screen onto the press ready for print. So it's not just, oh, this is a screen charge. Everything that has to do with the screen. So we print one hour, half an hour for the screen, a cleanup. So after everything is done, cleanup, we're gonna go with 15 minutes, okay? All right, so keep in mind there is no flash, no, nothing fancy. This is the most basic black print on a white t-shirt, nothing fancy. So we're gonna add this up. How much time did it take us? One hour plus half hour plus 0.75, that's 1.75. So now we're gonna multiply that by $75 per hour. Okay, so $131.25 is what it would cost us, including all the labor, everything, to get this done. This is where the profit margin comes in. So now we have to include the profit for the shop. If you don't want to include that, then you can just move on from here. But if you wanna be smart, if you wanna make money, this is, <laughs> this is what you need to do. So add, add the, the profit margin. So how much? 30, $32.80. $32.80. This is the profit that goes to the pocket of the shop, $32.80. So we're gonna add that together. We end up with $164.05. I'm gonna go ahead and erase this column right here, and then we're gonna break that down to a per shirt cost. The total cost, including profit margin, is 164.05, right? So we're gonna divide that by the total number of shirts. In this case, it was 24. So $6.83 is what we need to be charging per shirt to cover everything, labor, profit, everything, okay? So now, that does not, not the price of the shirt. We still have to add the shirt cost. In this case, what I recommend is don't memorize every single price that your vendor has. That's impossible. What I do recommend is memorize the top three shirts that you use. A cheap shirt, a medium shirt, and like a nice shirt. In this case, it's a Gildan. I happen to know it's going to be in the 350 range. We're going to do a little bit more math. I know you guys don't like that. <laughs> so we're looking at 350 and we have to mark that up. Why do we mark it up? Not because we're in the t-shirt business. But we mark it up because our vendors are going to have uh, order fulfillment fees, shipping fees, small order fees, cash loss fees whenever you use a credit card or any kind of bank card. So all those fees, they add up. If we're at 350 per shirt, we want to mark that up 50%. And usually that covers shipping, covers everything that has to do with that particular shirt. So now we can add the cost of the labor to the shirt. And what do we get, Reyes? You get $12 and eight cents okay so that should be the price that you give your customer for your shirt that is the price keep this in mind this is a key factor here this can make or break this is for small through xl anything over xl you should charge extra because the vendor is going to charge you extra the, the 2x is more expensive than the regular shirts 3x 4x and so forth so figure out how much it is that your vendor charges you extra for those bigger sizes and let your customer know this is the price but if you have any bigger sizes it's going to be this much per extra size or whatever it is me personally if if i was giving this out i don't really like to give these num weird numbers so i would either go down to 12 flat or move it up to 12 10. i like to keep it in 5 10 15 you know good numbers either 12 10 or just 12 flat knowing all this information knowing your numbers puts you in a position to whenever somebody comes at you with a low ball offer you know whether you can make it happen or not if somebody came to me and said well custom ink is doing it for 10 i want to say well go with custom ink but if somebody comes to me and says well can can you do it for you know 1150 i know my numbers i know my production so i'm going to probably say yeah 1150 is fine yeah we have a deal so that's why it's important to know know all your information know all your numbers know the in and out and know exactly what it's costing you to print your shirts. All right guys, so that concludes the price breakdown. I know, I'm sorry, it was a lot of math. That's just something that I, I wanted you guys to know so you have an idea of what it actually takes to run a screen printing shop and be profitable. All right, so let me know. Now that you guys know the numbers, are you starting your own screen printing shop or did I just scare you away? Put it in the comments below. And let me know what you guys think, guys. Let me know how you price your shirts. Let me know also, more importantly, what other videos do you guys want to see? Put it in the comments below. Whatever you guys want to see, let me know. 
And don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.